Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the Shamka Show. Uh, today I would like to talk to you a little bit about Chernobyl and the events that happened uh, 30 years ago on April 26, 1986. It was a horrible event and uh, I would like to share my story because uh, guess what? I lived uh, pretty close to Chernobyl in Kiev, which is about 60 miles south from uh, Chernobyl. So, April 1986, we still had Soviet Union, Gorbachev was the leader of the USSR, and I lived in Kiev, I was 15 year old, uh, finishing the 8th grade in school. Uh, in Soviet Union we had a total of 10 years in school, and 8 years is like unfinished degree, and then you have high school, it will be the ninth and the 10th grade. So, when these events happened, it happened classic uh, Soviet way. You see, when the government owes everything, including mass media, if something happens big, like some big uh, leader dies, like Brezhnev or Andropov, or big uh, catastrophe happens like Chernobyl, uh, TV studios, TV stations don't just drop everything in rush uh, to make, you know, breaking news, live report uh, from Chernobyl. Everybody sits tight and waits till the government tells them what to tell the people. So that's the most horrifying thing is that everybody becomes totally paralyzed when something big major happens because they don't know what to say because they don't have instructions. And I remember many times, well, not many, many times, but quite often, like for example, when uh, Leonid Brezhnev uh, passed away and he was a leader of Soviet Union for years. Um, after Khrushchev, he was running USSR for over a decade. So when he passed away in 1982, I believe, um, the first sign that something bad happened is uh, all the radio translation stop. So, for example, uh, we had radios, you know, like the ones that come on the cable into each apartment. And suddenly there is no more news, there is no more programs. All you have is a classical music playing. So you know that something bad has happened. If there's everywhere on the radio and maybe even on TV, there's only classical music playing. That means that government is thinking what to tell their people. And of course, the rumor mill starts, people start uh, you know, asking neighbors, calling each other like, do you know what's going on, do you know what's going on? So I remember that happened when Brezhnev died, when Andropov died, Chernenko died. It's a classic music playing on the radio. So this is what happened on April 27th. You see the explosion at Chernobyl power station happened uh, late night on April 26 on Friday. So next day on Saturday we heard this classical music played on the radio and this is was scary because it was like did somebody passed away you know Gorbachev was pretty young so maybe he got killed or what happened and of course then the rumor mill started and they started talking uh, you know, people telling each other, hey, there's something happened at Chernobyl, but nobody knows what. They're talking, maybe there is a fire. So for a day or so, for several days, but like we had no idea what's going on. And meanwhile, there was a horrible um, contamination uh, going on. A lot of radioactive material uh, got, a, ex you know, ex went in the air during an explosion. And then we started to hear the rumors that the party uh, leaders of Kiev, they took their people, their families out of, out of town. And, you know, Kiev it was the capital, it's still the capital of Ukraine, and it's like about 3 million population. So people started thinking there's probably something really serious happened. So only after quite a while, they announced on the radio that we have a report of a fire that happened at Chernobyl power plant, but nothing major, don't worry about it. So Kiev lived the way we always lived. You know, it's the end of uh, April and in the beginning of May we have really big holidays. We got May 1st, which is actually originally came, I believe, from Chicago. It's an international 
Solidarity of Workers, Workers uh, Solidarity Days, uh, 1 Maya, Dien Solidarnosti Trudyashisya, that we say in Russian. Then May 9 is another huge holiday. It's the Victory Day. It's when the Soviet Union uh, officially won the war against Germany. It's May 9. And so we had a parade in Kiev uh, on the May 1st, and conditions actually were quite bad in Kiev that time because depending on which way the wind will go, that's the way the radiative materials will spread. And Kiev got covered pretty bad. Still no one will tell for sure how bad it was. Um, and uh, we never had information. Of course, nobody had any personal devices to measure uh, radiation, no dosimetry available. The only way we started getting information is from our enemies. Uh, what I mean, at that, that time, during the Soviet Union, uh, there were quite a few radio stations translating, uh, broadcasting for Soviet Union. Uh, there was a Radio Freedom, which was American-sponsored radio, the BBC, of course, from England, and also uh, German, uh, German Wave, so-called uh, Deutsche Wave. Uh, there was all radio programs in Russian language, uh, which were telling us the news that the uh, Soviet government wouldn't tell us. And it was really hard to listen to them because they were jammed. So you, you find the frequency on your radio, uh, trying to listen to them, and then this horrible <laughs> noise will start coming up, and it jams this, that frequency. So the, you constantly have to adjust your uh, radio receiver to hear what's going on. And that's why we started getting this scary information, like they're saying, stay indoors, don't go outside, don't buy any fresh produce, don't buy milk, uh, try to stay on canned foods, because everything is polluted, everything is contaminated. And it was really weird to hear that, because our government was saying it was nothing really major, you know, we had to do a couple things, and... You know, they had to evacuate uh, the town of Pripyat, which is now the ghost uh, town, everybody familiar with it. And then they end up evacuating people in the 30 kilometers area. Everyone was moved out. That's how bad it was. And level of radiation were insane uh, right around the area of the power plant. Uh, and thousands of people got affected. And they were pu uh, pulling people volunteers from all over Soviet Union to help with that disaster. Uh, soldiers uh, got conscripted, the miners came, they were digging a mine under the building to reach the bottom where the reactor was. Um, and uh, nobody ever told anyone how bad the dose they got. Uh, but what I know for sure, at my dad's place, um, we had he worked at the factory, um, and they uh, took all the drivers to perform the evacuation. Uh, everyone who had a driver's license for the truck or bus, they got uh, taken, uh, given them a bus and a truck, and they drove into the zone. That's how they call it, it's called the zone, which was the 30 mile circles, to help to evacuate people. Only one driver didn't go because he was sick, he was in hospital. And like 10 years later, uh, my dad kind of mentioned, the, uh, or somewhere around that time, 10, 15 years later, that every single driver that went to Chernobyl to help with evacuation, they all died in the next 10, 15 years from cancer, from heart attack. So quite young, you know, in their 60s, maybe 50s, late 50s, 60s. The only person who was fine and still driving around was that driver that was sick that time and he didn't go to Chernobyl. So official statistics they say is like directly affected uh, amount of people who died in, during Chernobyl accidents, like 50 people, there was a firefighters and then some other personnel. But real numbers, I don't think we will ever find out, but we know that contamination was really horrendous. Uh, huge areas of Ukraine got affected a uh, neighboring state of Belarus got affected really bad and uh, they had uh, radioactive rain happen in Ireland. I heard stories about uh, United States um, Navy base in Scotland, I believe, 
they actually got their radiation alarms uh, screaming and uh, the Navy, uh, United States Navy, they thought they had some issues with their submarines. So they went through their procedures trying to figure out uh, what's, what's going on, was there some kind of leakage happening. But that was the wind from Chernobyl reached as far as Scotland. Uh, and nuclear power plants in California notices the background rising and it's like way around the globe. So that was a huge, huge uh, explosion of uh, and spread of radioactive material all over the world. And I a little bit kind of got the feeling how bad it was later on because we still had to stay at school. Uh, regardless, you know, people were trying some People were trying to move out out of Kiev and take their kids, but uh, school said, no, you have a final test in the end of the year, end of the May, so everybody has to stay. If you want to get your graduation papers that you finished eight years in school, you have to stay and take your uh, test. So we did stay, uh, took our tests, and then my parents uh, decided to uh, at least send me out of Kiev till uh, first, uh, radioactive materials, which was um, iodine. It has a 30-day, uh, something like that, 30 or 90 days uh, half-life. So after that period of time, it becomes inactive. Uh, it's not radioactive anymore. So they uh, talked to a friend of mine, the uh, kid I went to school with. It was their, his parents, and uh, his grandma lived in St. Petersburg area. So they agreed uh, to let me go with him and stay there for months till the worst uh, pass in Kiev. So we hopped on a train, Kiev to St. Petersburg, and the most interesting thing happened is when we arrived to St. Petersburg. Usually, you know, you hop off the train and you go take a taxi or take a subway and you go where you go. Well, the area where the trains from Ukraine were arriving was carted off, you couldn't go anywhere. And they had a monitors in the end that everyone who arrived from Ukraine, from Kiev, had to go through the radiation monitors before they can go out of the, into the city. And on the worst days of uh, that accident, when the wind was blowing uh, uh, from north, from Chernobyl, I was actually playing outside, playing soccer with my friends, and uh, my friend's grandma she went on a walk every evening and she had this uh, furry uh, kind of like a sweater and gora sweater so it has a lot of you know uh, long uh, i'll say feathers but uh, long uh, wool so when i walked through the monitor it beeped and they said okay you go onto that line so anybody who triggered the monitor had to go on the line and get frisked with a dosimeter you know get it frisked really detail uh, in detail and same was that uh, old lady, the grandma, she also had to go uh, with me in the line because she also created the alarm. So after when it came my turn to get uh, uh, frisked, uh, that lady, uh, I guess it was a lady, I don't remember now, she started, you know, checking me out, going from the head and slowly frisking all body. And she went down to my shoes. I was horrified to see that the arrow just went <laughs> all the way. And, you know, that thing started alarming. So the lady said, well, when you arrive to your destination, uh, you need to dig a hole about, you know, three feet deep in the ground, put your shoes there, bury it and forget about it. I was like, holy crap, okay. Then they checked the grandma and grandma's sweater screamed same way, just, uh, you know, the, the symmetry went Purr. So she found out that we are going, you know, like we're together and so the, they said okay when you dig that hole for your shoes also take that sweater no don't, don't try to wash it or save it it's bad just bury it there in the dirt and let it be um, so that's what we did when we arrived to the small town uh, close to st petersburg we went outside dug the hole buried my shoes and buried that sweater um, that's how my chernobyl experience went and I believe uh, that for amount of uh, radiation uh, contamination the Kiev had with 
technically should be evacuated, but it was quite impossible to evacuate really a 3 million population city. So the government decided just, oh, whatever. We just tell them that it's okay. They just started running a, a washing trucks and trucks, you know, it has a big tank, water tank and spray. And they were just running those trucks constantly trying to uh, keep the dust down and wash it down to the river. And uh, since then, a lot of uh, cancer cases in Ukraine, uh, a lot of kids that are born with uh, some kind of anomalies. So a lot of the bad things happening. So health-wise, population of Ukraine is not doing really well. And uh, of course, you probably seen the TV shows, what's going on in the zone, the 30 kilometers area where wildlife has just exploded and a big game came back, deer, moose, wolves, bears, and the town of Pripyat looks like that ghost town. A perfect example for somebody to find out uh, uh, what will happen to Earth after uh, humankind, man is gone. Is Pripyat is a great example how quickly uh, things that we build can deteriorate and turn into dust. It's pretty impressive and people go there now as a tourist and I don't know if I really want to go but uh, I still in the back of my head I remember those horrible events of April 26, 27 of 1986 and that uh, scary classical music played on the radio. So this is my story. This is what I remember about Chernobyl events back in 1986. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching my channel. Goodbye.